Greetings YouTube, Joe here with Colonation Media, and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. This is episode number 68, and in this episode we're here at Mount Battle, and we're going to be taking on Area 4 to get some training in, uh, while it's still relevant, because if we go too much farther we're going to get like pretty over leveled, and then Area 4 will end up being kind of like what Area 2 was, and I don't really want that so much. I want it to be at least a little bit interesting uh, and I also want it to have an impact on my training and not have it just be uh, tiny little bits of experience. Uh, so we're gonna start with Crobat and Laron and um, yeah we should be able to fit all of Area 4 in one episode uh, because it's a fairly easy uh, and quick moving area so as far as the future areas go, they probably will have to be split up. I don't know about Area 5, but definitely like Area 6, 7, and beyond. Um, that's all going to have to be in two episodes. Um, because I just don't want to end up having, you know, like a 20 plus minute video. If I can keep it between 15 and 20 minutes, then that's okay. Closer to the 15 minute range, that's okay. But otherwise, it just takes so long to render and upload that it's just... It's not good because especially because if it gets corrupted or if something you know fails uh on youtube's end or anything and i have to um you know re-upload it it's just going to take forever and i don't want you know to end up having to skip days and all that stuff so uh just for everybody's convenience and happiness uh i'm going to try to keep the videos at that range so when we get to those higher areas, I will split it up. Okay, well, while I was uh, blabbering there, we finished up the first battle. It was a Rhyhorn and a Tentacle. Tentacle uh, goes down pretty easily to physical moves, um, as well as psychic and ground types, and also uh, electricity as well. Um, and then Rhyhorn, obviously, um, is weak against steel, so there you go. There you have it. Okay, so we have Ninetales and Crobat out this time against just a Curly at level 29, and it's just a Curly. So we're going to use our new Shadow Ball move that I haven't gotten the opportunity to use yet. And uh, because Curly 1 is unevolved, and secondly because it uh, doesn't have that much in the way of physical defense, uh, Crobat's able to knock it out uh, easily in one hit with that Shadow Ball. And that does it for the second battle already, and if you see what I mean, uh, with what I was saying about how it moves quickly I mean you know we're three minutes into the video and we already uh, have two battles done and we're starting our third chaser faux pas it's an interesting way to spell faux pas we have a loudred and a love disc love disc I don't know if we've seen one of these yet but they're just they're very annoying and it tends to be what a lot of the uh, computer players end up using a lot of the uh, Cypher Peons and Mount Battle people, they like to use annoying Pokemon. And I feel like I'm just repeating myself saying, this Pokemon's annoying, this Pokemon's annoying. But they tend to use all the annoying ones, what can I say? There's not that many annoying Pokemon, but they just tend to use a lot of the same ones. Loudred goes down in one hit to Flamethrower, as expected, because it doesn't have a lot of defense on either end. And Love Disc goes for the agility, so it's probably going to be the fastest one on the field now, I'm guessing, because it's pretty quick to begin with. Yeah, it's going to go first. It's going to go for the charm, and it's going to lower Crobat's attack harshly by two levels. But I don't care about that because it barely has any HP left. Bite does the trick. It is a pure water type for those of you that are wondering, and I think it has the Swift Swim ability, so uh, yeah, don't make it rain uh, because it will get instantly twice as fast. Um, but pretty much use anything against it. Electricity and grass obviously works the best. Um, if not, just go for the uh, standard physical moves, and you'll be good to go. You should be able to knock it out in uh, two hits or so. Okay, well, we'll switch uh, Zaprong in to uh, fight with Crobat. Crobat's going to be fighting most of this area, if not um, starting in every battle, because he was the farthest behind. He was at level 33, uh, so I want to get him some uh, battling experience here because I don't even know if I've used him since I evolved him I may not have all right Zaprong and Crobat it is 
And we have a Corsola and a Beldum out in the field. Corsola is rock and water, so Thunder Punch should take care of that in one hit, even despite uh, its bulkiness. And I'm going to expect two Shadow Balls to finish off Beldum here. It does about a little over half health. Uh, Beldum is a Steel and Psychic type Pokemon. It is the first in the line of Metagross and that evolution line. Um, and the weird part about Beldum is not necessarily its typing, but the fact that it only knows takedown and that's the only move it's going to learn. So, um, you can expect a takedown from it. It does a decent amount of damage because it has a pretty decent uh, attack power, physical attack power that is. It missed, but it would have done a decent amount of damage. Um, but it also inflicts recoil, so I, I don't know. I think Beldum kind of sucks by himself. Once he evolves, however, it becomes a completely different story, and I think he's one of the uh, better Pokemon out there as far as steel types go. Thunder Punch takes out Quillfish in one hit. Easy, and, well, the Poison Point does uh, get the better of us there, which it usually does because I swear the 30% chance of getting poison when touching a Pokemon with Poison Point goes up to about, like, 85%, maybe 90 uh, when I'm fighting them. At least that's just what it seems like. Maybe I'm over-exaggerating that, but that's what it feels like. Oh well. I guess it doesn't matter because the battle is over and we get healed between every battle somehow. Don't know exactly how that works yet, but whatever. Again, not going to complain. Alright, Beauty Neva. She's going to start out with Cacnea and Tomeko, and that is the extent of her team. She doesn't have anyone else on her team, so uh, this should be an easy battle. Uh, strategy for this battle. Don't use ground-type moves. Chimeko is immune with Levitate. Um, I'm going to go for the Shadow Ball on Chimeko because it does have much higher special defense than physical defense, and Shadow Ball in third generation, of course, is a physical move. And it also uh, works better in Crobat's favor because his attack is much higher. That gets rid of Chimeko in one hit, uh, as opposed to Bite, which definitely would have taken two hits to knock out Chimeko. We get a critical hit on the Ice Punch from Electabuzz on Cacnea, but I think that would have killed him anyway. At least it should have, because, I mean, Cacnea is unevolved and just doesn't have amazing stats or anything, so... Pretty sure that was going to go our way either way. And we are halfway through the area already. Uh, so we're making good time here, just about at the 8 minute mark, and uh, yeah, we're already halfway through. I'll switch Laron in for this battle. I'm pretty sure this is the lady that just has a Grimer, and that's it, if I remember correctly. If that's the case, we're in good shape. Yep, it's just a Grimer. Nothing else but Grimer, and uh, with Laron and Crobat, we have an awesome advantage because neither one of these Pokemon can be poisoned, so... One of uh, Grimer's biggest uh, advantages is not so much an advantage anymore anyway. And I'm almost positive that Grimer's even slower than Laron. So with a wing attack and a headbutt, that should be it for Grimer. He should not be able to stand up to that. I was thinking about using Iron Tail, but I didn't want to risk it missing. Because who knows what Grimer has up his sleeve. Grimer can be uh, kind of tricky sometimes if you let it uh, set up a little bit. Okay. Goodbye, yeah. Your Grimer sucks. Who would just have a Grimer on their team? Honestly. Honestly. Okay, let's move up to zone number 37. And she just asked us if we thought that her Pokemon looked like ninjas. Which, that would be really cool if they were ninjas, but they're not. Kecleon and Gligar are her Pokemon. And Kecleon obviously has the uh, color change ability, so if you have to, you can manipulate that. Uh, but I think I want to try to knock it out with just one Iron Tail. That would be awesome. And then it should take a couple of hits to knock out Gligar. Yeah, it's probably going to take three hits to knock out Gligar. Gligar does have a good bit of defense, so you're going to be hard-pressed to kill it unless you hit it with a water move or especially an ice move, which uh, is four times effective. Iron Tail actually hit again. I really just haven't been missing with it that often at all. And uh, Kecleon goes down. So, awesome. One hit. Can't complain. Headbutt, and we'll go with another wing attack. But Gligar is going to be able to get another attack off, which I guess kind of sucks. But he used Harden, so... 
it's not really that bad at all. His defense did go up, but he really doesn't have that much HP left, so Headbutt takes it out pretty easily. And uh, yeah, Crobat is about a little bit over halfway to level 35, so he's getting kind of sort of caught up. I'm hoping that by the end of this uh, area, he'll be completely caught up. We'll see about that, though. All right, we have three battles left, 38, 39, and 40. So, oh yes, I remember this one. She uses Bug and Grass-type Pokemon. So, I'm going to keep Crobat out, obviously, because he has an advantage. And we'll switch Ninetales in for Laron. And uh, we might be able to take out this whole battle, like, in one turn. Because she has three Pokemon. She starts off with Yanma and Gloom, but she also has an Ariados uh, waiting to replace whichever one of these Pokemon dies first. So, uh, if we use Heat Wave and then Wing Attack, we should be able to win this battle in one turn, assuming that Heat Wave hits both of the opponents. So, Wing Attack, bam, Yanma goes down, I'm not worried about that. Its defenses aren't that high anyway. And Ariados is next. I think I already mentioned that. If you do let this battle drag on, you probably will end up either poisoned, put to sleep, or paralyzed, depending, because Gloom likes to use Sleep Powder and Stun Spore, and obviously Ariados is the poison type, so you always have the chance to be uh, poisoned when he's on the field. Heat Wave does indeed hit both of the opponents, and... Yeah, this battle is over uh, before it, they even get a chance to do anything. First turn, uh, down they both go. Or I guess all three. So we have two battles left now. And I can't remember off the top of my head uh, what the leader uses in this area. I, don't, I keep wanting to think that this is the Rock Tomb area, but I'm also kind of leaning towards the fact that that might be the next area. So that would make this one the facade area. I guess we'll find out in the next battle. Okay, Cool Trainer Rose. She has a Nuzleaf and a Graveler to start off with, and those are the only two members of her team, so this battle, again, can go by very quickly. I have Laron and Crobat on my side, so the uh, attacks are pretty easy to manage here. We're going to go for the Iron Tail on Graveler as it has the uh, type advantage. Even though Graveler's defense is so high, I'm pretty sure Stab plus Laron's high attack should be able to overcome it. And uh, Crobat grew up to level 35 after knocking out Nuzleaf with one wing attack. And he's trying to learn Air Cutter, which is a decent move, but I'm not going to teach it to him. One, because it only has 55 base power uh, compared to wing attack's um, 60 base power. So not only is it a... Uh, lower powered move, I mean it does attack both opponents, but at the same time it also has lower accuracy, so I don't really want to go there, I'm just going to stick with wing attack, and then maybe eventually get rid of wing attack for aerial ace down the road, but uh, yeah, I don't need air cutter. Okay, so let's see what I want to do here. Um, now that Crobat's all caught up, um, I could switch him out, but I'm not going to. I'm going to switch out Laron because I'm not entirely convinced that this isn't the Rock Tomb one. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, he also mentions that every trainer in this uh, area that we went through, all nine of the previous ones were all ladies, and this is the only guy. It's kind of interesting. I didn't really pay attention to that the first time I went through this, but it is indeed true. Okay, so we have Vaporeon and Crobat out on our side. And, oh yeah, Hitmontop has the Intimidate ability, so that's going to lower your attack right off the bat, which is kind of bad news for Crobat. Uh, so, we'll go for a Wing Attack on Hitmontop and a Water Pulse to make sure it goes out in one hit. Oh, but we get a critical hit, so it ends up taking out the Hitmontop in one hit anyway, uh, which is fantastic. I was about to say fabulous, but I decided to change my mind, and it came out all weird. So I guess we'll get a head start on Wigglytuff, too, with a Water Pulse. And, oh, that gets a critical hit, too, and knocks out Wigglytuff. And what just happened? Holy crap, I don't think I've ever had that happen before. Two critical hits in a row, and I didn't use Focus Energy or anything like that? That is just ridiculous. He does use Toxic on Vaporeon, but normally the strategy is to use Toxic on Hitmontop to get him poisoned to activate... Well, I guess he doesn't have Guts because he has Intimidate, but it activates 
uh, facade's, I guess, secondary effect in which it does double the damage um, when the user is either poisoned, uh, paralyzed, or I guess not. I don't know if it's burned, because burned would normally lower your attack. But for sure, uh, when it's paralyzed or poisoned, uh, it works even better when the Pokemon has the Guts ability because that negates the lowering of attack that uh, burn conditions have. So, yeah. All right, well, we won the battle. Well, I can see why you made it through this far. Here are your Poke Coupons. Things will get tougher for you as of the next area. Focus and keep going. And he's going to hand us 700 Poke Coupons for our trouble. And uh, now we can go uh, pick up our TM. And I think in the next episode, we're going to head back to uh, the Cypher Key Lair and get started uh, knocking out all the uh, Cypher Peons there, capturing all their Shadow Pokemon. And uh, TM42 is indeed Facade. I'm probably not going to use it, but it's there if I want it now, right? Thank you very much for watching, everyone, and please stay tuned for the next episode, episode number 69. Game on.